the What to Read Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show is Hi, Victoria. Hi, Laura. Super excited to be here again with you. So happy to have you here. So tell us what you've been up to. Oh my gosh, so much has been going on. It has been a year. However, now it's in the new year. So I'm really excited for all the things that are going to happen. So hi, everyone. If you're not familiar with me, I'm Victoria from Biblio Lifestyle. I gather readers, both avid and aspiring readers, through my online community, Biblio Lifestyle. Um, I have so much great programming planned for the new year. And the one I'm really excited about is our 2023 Reading Goals and Vision Board Workshop. So at the workshop, we're going to help readers clearly define not just their reading goals, but also their life goals and their resolutions, because I think the principles for goal setting can be applied both to reading and your everyday life. We're going to create a game plan that will help you stay consistent and achieve your reading goals. And also, we're going to help you create a vision board. We're going to talk about why it's important. We're going to be making one together during the session. And I'm really excited about it because I think setting a reading goal is extremely important. Setting life goal life goals are really important because at the end of the day, if we don't have goals, then we're not going to achieve anything. So I'm really excited about it. And I can't wait to see readers there. There we go. Um, so let's talk about reading goals. Like what kind of reading goals can readers set themselves up? Like is it numeric? Is it, is it trying different challenges? You know, give us some ideas for people who are new to making reading goals. So some really easy reading goals for readers. I think number one, if you are an aspiring reader, if you're just, you know, um, when you go on vacation kind of reader, one goal you could set for yourself is to actually start a reading habit where you're reading consistently um, every day, every week, every month, whatever works for you. I think just setting a goal to start a reading habit is really good. If you read occasionally, but you're not consistent, set a goal to read consistently. Um, another easy goal is to read a specific number of books. Um, some folks will say, I want to read a book a month. Some might want to read two, maybe it could be, you know, a numerical goal. That's also an easy option. Um, if it's not per month, you could do per year. Another goal that's really common is for readers to read outside of their comfort zone and explore different genres. So if you find yourself reading maybe more thrillers or romance, you know, how about you give a historical fiction novel a try? or try something a bit more literary or explore horror or something like that. If you find that you're reading the same kinds of authors, how about uh, setting a reading goal or intention to explore new authors? I always enjoy exploring debut authors. That could also be a, a reading goal, you know, taking a chance on a new voice. And another goal is actually just to be more of an intentional reader. So if you're reading books all the time and starting a habit isn't your problem, reading more consistently isn't your problem, maybe you can set a goal to be more intentional. You know, what stories do you want to prioritize? What stories do you want to read more of? what books or authors you've been meaning to read but you haven't gotten around to it because obviously you might get distracted by newer books or just books um, other readers are talking about. So I think those are a handful of really easy reading goals that anyone can set. And so she you write down those goals? Like what kind of like, you know, like how do you, do you write them down? Do you set them out to somebody? Like how do you keep yourself accountable during the year because we have big intentions in January 1st and then like December 31st comes in and we're like what happened <laughs> you know absolutely absolutely so I highly recommend writing your goals down I'm a big journaler so I always you know advocate for journaling and 
physically writing your goals down. I'm not saying that anything is wrong with, um, you know, using your notes app or doing something digital, but I think having a physical reminder is, is incredibly helpful. So if you're a journaler, include it in your journal. Um, if you, <clears throat> sorry, if you have a calendar, I highly recommend writing it on your calendar, making it visible. And that's part of the reason why I'm a huge proponent for vision boards because it's a visual representation of what you're trying to achieve. So if you're making a vision board, if you're joining me at the workshop, or if you're just making one by yourself, add it to your vision board. So have a physical reminder that you can see. It could be as simple as a post-it note on the refrigerator. Just have something physical. Um, I also recommend telling someone, telling your friend, telling uh, your family members. Um, when you vocalize a goal, in a weird kind of way, it makes you more accountable because now you're telling your friends, you're telling the world, hey, I am setting this goal, I'm setting this intention. And I think it's a natural human nature to want to achieve it and be successful. So I think also vocalizing it. So there are two things I think are really important, having a physical reminder and vocalizing it to friends, if you're active on an online community, set the goals. If you're using a reading app, set the goal at the start of the year, because then you'll get little prompts and reminders to help you along the way. And if you have friends and family, they can be, your, they can be great cheerleaders as well. So vocalize it, but also have a physical reminder as well. And so we, so we talk about like visualizing and putting an in intention and writing them down. So um, what kind of challenges do you recommend for us to look for? I think Google Lifestyle might have a challenge to talk about this year. Yes. So there are many um, different reading challenges out there. And I firmly believe finding a reading challenge that works for you is um, a great way for you to stay on track and be successful. So if you have a reading goal in mind, I actually think you can create your very own challenge. If you're looking for something external, something to provide inspiration, I would love for you to join uh, Biblio Lifestyles uh, 2023 reading challenge. We have three reading challenges. So you can pick one or you can join us on all three. So our main reading challenge is our year long challenge. It's very low pressure, it's uh, 12 prompts. And our theme for this year is to help you explore new genres. So each month we're recommending that you read one book from each uh, genre prompt. So you, one month it's gonna be romance, another month it's gonna be mystery, travel, um, and just many different topics out there. So uh, if you head to my website, bibliolifestyle.com, just select challenges from the menu and you'll see all year long challenge there. But I also understand that sometimes, you know, readers don't really like the idea of a year long commitment. So we also have seasonal challenges as well. Now we have a summer reading challenge, which is gonna be a three month challenge with five prompts. And we have a fall reading challenge, which is also another three month challenge that, but that um, season only has three prompts. We have additional prompts for readers who wanna read more books. We, you can double up on each prompt or select um, new prompts as well. But ultimately the goal is to allow readers to create their own challenge by providing them with tips and inspiration or they can follow along on um, the pre-planned uh, reading challenge. So at the end of the day, make it about you, make it about what you want to read. And you can also incorporate books that you want to read into the prompts. So it's not very rigid, it's quite flexible. Love this. And so what can we expect for readers who are not part of the newsletter? What can they expect to get from the newsletter? 
Oh, I absolutely love the newsletter. It's my baby. I've been running it now for three years. Never missed a Friday. Um, so the Biblio Lifestyle Weekly Newsletter is sent to readers every Friday. It's a roundup of the content we are sharing on the blog. We always provide reading tips, book lists, recipes, and just inspiration to kind of help you have a great literary weekend, a great literary escape, and a great reading life. So um, it's free, it's once weekly, and it's it's an editorial newsletter. So um, if you like a great roundup of literary and bookish things, uh, head to bibliolifestyle.com and subscribe to the newsletter. In recent times, readers have been asking to hear more about me and what I'm reading. So once you sign up for that newsletter, you'll also have the option to sign up for my personal weekly Sunday newsletter. It's new, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. And this is where I really just share what I'm reading at each given time, um, just other things that are going on in my life, thoughts, musings, and just recommendations. So I've been having fun with that. That is a, you know, more of something new that I'm exploring, but we had fun over the holidays. I even made some pen pals um, where we were sharing and exchanging Christmas cards through that portion of the newsletter. So that's absolutely fun. However, if you're completely new, completely new to reading or you're just starting on your reading journey, what I actually recommend is a great entry point into the community and into my world is actually taking my reader type quiz. I think the reader type quiz is just a great way for you to kind of see where you are in your reading journey and get specific resources from the website to help you start reading, get more intentional, be more consistent, maintain the habit and all that good stuff. So I recommend whether you're an avid or aspiring reader, take the quiz because it will get it will help you get clear. So um, if you're interested, visit readertypequiz.com. That's readertypequiz.com. Or you can just visit my website, Biblio Lifestyle, and you'll find a link uh, to take the quiz there. But um, I think it's really helpful. It's a great resource and it's a great entry point to um, help you as well and then streamline you into the newsletter. Love this. And so tell us where you can find you online on social. You can find me on social media at Biblio Lifestyle. I'm available on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, just anywhere. There's a social media you'll find. Um, you'll find me there. I'm definitely more active on Instagram and I have tons of inspiration on Pinterest. And you can find all those links at bibliolifestyle.com. Thank you, Victoria, for being in the show. Thank you. I had fun. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other romance recommendations, please visit whattoreadnextblog.com. Did you know you can purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore? With Libro.fm, you can pick up more than 250,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from real booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company, you know the name. But you'll be part of a different story, one that supports your local community. If you're new to audiobooks, there's a perfect way to squeeze into more reading to your busy life. Listen with the free Libro.fm app while you do your chores, walk your dog, relax at home. The Watch Read Next podcast has a special offer for our listeners. Get two audiobooks on Libro.fm for the price of one with your first month of membership. Use code Watch to Read Next. This offer is only valid for new members in Canada and the U.S. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.